Welcome everyone to the second live stream in case we are live with this new better stuff you never know. Welcome back everyone. Let's see how many of the 18 people are interested enough to to tune in. Also pro tip if you are an unsuccessful YouTuber uh, you can also mix expensive stuff by the way not a paid advertisement with tap water then you have more of the stuff for a longer time. Just some cheapskate tip. Anyway, just joking. Um, so regarding operating system, so we had made some live streams. Welcome Jenny. We made some live streams about um, microkernel stuff. So many of the recurring audience, of course, now I do Linux distribution for 20 years. Although initially it was not mine, but Clifford Wolf, the Rock Linux that I joined around 1998, so 20 years ago. Then I made desktop Rock Linux because the Rock Linux people were not as interested in desktop packages, so I added GNOME, KDE, all the other fun stuff. And because they somehow were busy with life in 1998, I published this as desktop Rock Linux until we eventually met a couple of times and came together and they said it's, it's amazing and I, they said it's amazing and I wanted to share resources together, everything usually is better and stronger and stuff. So we joined forces that became Rock Linux 2, I think. Um, and I was uh, then stable release maintainer for a couple of years until um, the, the usual friction of people breaking stuff and I wanted to more commercially promote, promote this. So eventually we forked this around 2004-ish or something to T2 and then Rock Linux because we tried to do it professionally and Rock Linux people continued on with life. Rock Linux doesn't exist anymore and T2 still exists, which is like Rock Linux for many years improved and further developed and still the same spirit built from source just like Gen2 with cross-compile target supporting ARM but of course x86 and PowerPC Spark and P3 and SG10 and all the fun stuff in between. So of course 20 years I consider myself mostly Linux uh, developer and yeah P3, SGI and all the even Q QEMU KVM and, and all we, co we contributed to everything. I contributed even 20 years ago to GIMP, to Chrome uh, V8, Java, JavaScript engine and glibc and GCC and here's something small and there's something small and so on. And um, of course, realistically, I have to realize 30 years after Linux, Linux's invention, we are not yet there where Linux is replacing Windows or macOS on a large scale. And so certainly with the peak box of macOS, I think right now would be the best time to bring and really more amazing as macOS operating system because Windows, of course, many people um, are not the most satisfied with telemetry or, of course, previous time stability and uh, otherwise all the other proprietary Windows I issues. And I was thinking, so with Linux, I'm also not the most satisfied, right? In the Linux kernel, I think many things are not the most amazing. For example, ever-changing kernel stuff. So um, I'm, I'm really getting tired that previously the stuff was the Linux kernel. People said they um, they changed Linux kernel because so this is a benefit because they like constantly refactor and clean up, and this is a benefit. But I I personally don't see it as such a benefit anymore because when I upgrade something like PS3, Bitrotten, SGI, Origin, uh, Octane, and so on, usually. Everything that's not mainstream usually gets broken rather quickly because people change it and change it and then they usually they auto replace all the APIs and it sometimes works but sometimes it doesn't and then you a year or two later you want to upgrade SGI Octane then you sit there a whole month trying to get stuff working again. Beside I made this videos I made you some notes on several flights and sitting on the beach and stuff here I you can watch the previous live streams. I'm in the meantime yes performance I know somewhere I have here my uh, operating system notes uh, for um, microkernel stuff that I've showed already previously, making there some sorts how I would separate stuff and uh, communication, inter process communication, how I would want to split drivers and many drivers, and yes, performance, performance, but you see all the security vulnerabilities. I rather have something 100% or 99% stable than like in the Linux kernel where one typo buffer over under run in a joystick driver, a keyboard driver, a floppy driver. Um, can cause in security vulnerabilities and nowadays with all the connected 
internet and internet of things stuff uh, of course security should in my opinion go over everything let's see um, comments in the audience before we continue how are the uh, new users yes Danny I know I just said to Dave uh, if he booting I probably should really do it the next days on maybe github so ask for support that they have a patreon style system okay good well so um you, you there's this patreon button since um i opened this relatively newish we have already some patreons but some also already unsubscribed i don't know why my recurring theme if you unsubscribe and delete your patreon donations that's cool and fine but maybe leave a comment why that i it, of course you go on with life other priorities everything but if it's because you want other content you had other expectations please leave a comment that i know what's going on um, and thank you everyone for supporting me already for on patreon and uh, i've actually today wanted to continue some code so this is operating system i um BSD based, uh, yeah, so there are some BSD based microkernels. So, like L4, I looked already in L4, a uh, couple of, there's also, of course, Mach microkernel that GNU Hurt is based on, and even ironically, macOS is based so much to performance, right? Performance, performance, performance. macOS is actually based on a microkernel, although, in my opinion, they don't really use it like that. Um, they have basically one huge GNU BSD process running, and nearly everything. Um, so, Basically, well, long story short, they don't use it much. So it's it's they don't have much benefit from this, in my opinion. Um, such a problem today, it's modern hardware. Uh, yeah, detard. So this is also my saying, but of course, the argument from the monolithic kernel people is that yeah, you see with all the security mitigations for Spectre and Melton that sometimes the security mitigations are 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe up to 50 percent in some worst case database workloads. So yeah, but I would argue, I would rather take such a security uh, benefit and this performance penalty uh, because as you say, it's yeah fast enough and then I rather have super secure systems also in terms of access points, uh, routers and also I said this already on my blog many years ago, I said this that on typical network hardware with Linux or BSD, everything on a router or firewall, everything is running in one process, right? And uh, so basically, you, um, was it this maybe? Uh, yeah, it's this maybe. So on a typical uh, WRT something um, or off the shelf Linux based or even any other, I don't think this is a good software architecture, right? That you have a network appliance and everything runs in one address space. I mean, normally you would, no real computer scientist in university would design it uh, that way. You would always separate this into modules for maintainability, for stability. And um, yeah, I need to check out uh, Haiku how, um, how much microkernel that really is. The problem is the source space usually is so yard large that even reviewing this usually takes quite long getting into this or either chatting with some people um, and gathering some data points or reading the source for quite some time. So I was thinking, so um, yeah, it's, of course there are some projects, uh, maybe it would make sense to uh, use Haiku more or uh, something. Um, but so I was thinking the problem is if, if I would say, so of course uh, you may have noticed with uh, the many live streams, I have quite some ideas, not only for vintage retro, but also for modern stuff or daily stuff happening here, uh, even on, on Mac OS system call stuff that are not amazing. And uh, more videos coming up to this. So I have many ideas that we could do. Um, of course, we will continue to sell exact scan, OC arcade and recompress and fun stuff like this and do projects in, in that regard. But one idea is, of course, this Mac OS failing like this and people like, of course, and I understand very well, some aspect of the Mac OS UI are quite attractive and that are not as, still not as amazingly working on Linux even today. And why is this? Because the Linux desktop, in my opinion, first of all, we had this huge GNOME fallout there, that the huge GNOME rewrite, many people I think did not like the most. Then we had the huge KDE rewrite that was people liked, but it was like in what I heard mostly extremely slow, non-very performant affair, or KDE 5 Plasma, whatever that was. I, I start to lose track of the versioning numbers. And so I think if you would pull this off, just, but what is your idea? If you, if you would like assemble a team, like 
work for a year or let's I mean say you have some really good people you don't waste much time the problem is of course you can't write Google microkernel from scratch in a year with amazing UI and applications but like start simple and not overcharge and have some like really smooth working stuff so the problem with this is of course there are already 1000 Linux distributions which I ironically said myself already but if you take away all this old-fashioned installer stuff makes this like as smoothly integrated as like similar to macOS, just like more stable or something um, and working on officially working on x86 hardware without requiring Hackintosh the problem is of course it is extremely hard to sell an operating system and I'm very well aware of this is why I discuss it on YouTube and I don't do it right now but of course so many people, I mean, this is likely why we have 1000 Linux distributions because everyone dreams about, hey, my dream about my operating system. And of course, there are 12 not amazing operating systems, and then you make your 13th one, and then there are 13 not amazing operating systems. That is the whole crux in this line of thinking, which is honestly, I will pro most likely, well, honestly, I would probably have made the most money if I would have made stupid iOS games. So probably I lost my chance to become billionaire quickly with not doing stupid games when there was a chance. This is to thinking too seriously and not maximizing um, your income. So it's life, life tip, pro tip and lesson, um, doing the most fun stuff, uh, doing, doing the, the most scientific stuff is not always the best way to become a millionaire. And yes, yeah, so, so much to that. So when, when you see all the crappy iOS game apps, then yeah, this is probably, well, war, not is, was, it is probably not anymore. So yeah, also uh, in that similar regard, if we focus, like my company, if we focus to expanding our line with like small useful utility applications like ExactScan, OC Arcade, Recompress, then this most likely will make much more money than an operating system. It's just that I see Windows, which I don't like very much with all the telemetry and not trust Microsoft and old fashioned APIs. Um, for example, then people always say, yes, yeah, this is hearsay. No, for example, monitoring a file, I, I wanted to implement some hot folder for exact scan on Windows. And there are like three, I found three APIs for monitoring a folder for file notifications. And all three suck like one using one eventing API, another using another API. The, one of them, I, I'm not, maybe all of them, not sure. I, I think at least two of them are documented too. If you have many file or change operations, you will lose events. Like what, what kind of API is that? That it's documented like, okay, the API is already shit. And then it's in the official documentation. If you have heavy eventing IO, you will not get all events. I mean, who is writing such an eventing API? It's hilarious. Um, so yeah, and um, I mean, so on the Linux side, so th this is why, of course, it's probably not the smartest, smartest business choice, but with the event of Apple's peak bugs, I'm thinking like, yeah, why is there not like an amazingly usable OS like this? But maybe Haiku would maybe eventually could c come closest, but yeah. Um, Detard ask userland or custom kernel here. Yeah, so, so ideally, because I'm not the greatest fan of the Linux kernel anymore, so I'm I'm still like a hundred, like nearly hundred percent Linux guy, but I'm not as impressed. Having having grown twenty years in the Linux community, I'm not as impressed as I once was with the code. Also, in my opinion, the Linux architecture with this monolithic kernel, also the BSD, so BSDs and Linux kernel, it's ex an extremely old architecture. Like when we usually are holding here this vintage and vintage and retro stuff into the camera here, like our vintage uh, Voodoo and rendition Verity. If you think this is vintage, in my opinion, the monolithic kernel in this form of Unix is, is extremely outdated. Normally you would never, in my opinion, it, it should also not be written in C. It's, of course, I write each day, I write C, C++, Lua and so on. Of course, C is error prone. Even I, I consider myself quite extremely good in C and C++, well, at least C++ except the modern, modern stuff that I don't like very much. But of course C is error prone. I'm not the greatest fan. I would, 
argues that many things can be written more reliable, maintainable in some light version of C++ at least. So, well, Rust is, in my opinion, maybe not the most readable and not most comfortable to work with for all the syntactic sugar reasons and compiling the Rust compiler. But I would argue that some light version of C++ would make a kernel code much more readable and maintainable to start with. And then, of course, I would prefer some more separation of privileges in this day and age. And so this is the, the paradox here. The, that is the question. If you base this off of Linux, then you have this Linux kernel that I'm not the greatest fan of anymore. And when you write a whole microkernel, then you have all the drivers and stuff. And you could do some shortcuts. So ideally, I the most likely because I fulfilled at least some obligations today. I was already not only the previous night I was, I said this in last yesterday's live stream, I was here, no joke, until uh, one in the night here debugging this Canon scanner. Uh, even this morning I was debugging some more. So I made this reverse engineering. This Canon scanner is now even the very most expensive reverse engineering project in a while. I fulfilled already my obligations on a Saturday to um, reverse engineer and, and implement some more amazing error handling for error conditions in exact scan today so I can have some fun today like live streaming on YouTube. Uh, I will most likely also do some vintage code maybe I try to finish uh, voodoo 3d text just just for the fun of it or something of that sort and saying this visits I'm very much aware how long this takes to write all this driver so I uh, by the way we have comments in the audience before I finish this uh, Dave says what about taking some ideas from Amigo as RS people have been quite successful in if you look at uh, Icaro's desktop, yes, I mean, it's uh, interesting that the Amiga people are indeed still um, rocking. Uh, maybe make, not mixing coffee with my Marty here. So maybe the most, actually, so the most logical choice might be to start with some network appliance. And But the problem is if you like only make a network routing OS that it's really stable as a first step to have some base to base this OS business on, like make an amazing microkernel because then you don't need so much. You only need some, well, the microkernel infrastructure and then some network stack and network drivers. And that's basically mostly it that you need for like an SS point. And then you could theoretically already have some network um, management, switch, firewall, firewall, router, SS point business to uh, base off. And then only as a second step expands this actually also nowadays in RAID systems, which by the way, I find hilarious that when you look, watch other famous YouTubers, you see that they have their this Unraid, which is I think Linux based. It's also funny, right? This Unraid, when you see the Linus tech tips and stuff, um, Unraid, that this is even a thing, right? And then some big YouTube business is using this and not like Fedora or Suze. There you see the irony in 2019 that's a big Linux business. They are not selling to YouTubers some server, but some new startup or something is selling some fishy pseudo unright. I don't know, something pseudo better because pseudo better magic. Um, well, although we realized ourselves LVM two year was not the most amazing error recovery, but and then there also was recently another one, this this I Justin had some jellyfish or I don't know, something of similar sorts. And yeah, so 2019 people sell storage appliances for reasons. But that could be so you could start with an rock solid microkernel stuff um, in that before you tackle the desktop and server. Um, and then to coming back to detailed questions there, you could, if you would say, okay, um, to make, to shorten this development life time there and uh, with your limited resources in a startup, you could actually reuse Linux drivers, right? You could have a micro well, you theoretically, you could even take an, if you don't want, so I, I heard the L4 microkernel family has some quite good microkernels like pistachio or um, hazelnut or pistachio, pistachio or something. Um, some of them apparently, but I looked and then I found the code base a little bit like auto-generated and yeah, maybe performance and something, but mm, readability is somewhere. I d didn't feel it immediately. It, it wasn't a love on the first look or wherever you say this in English. Anyway, it wasn't an instant love affair there. But you could theoretically, and this is, there are some like this G-Note people, but I've not really seen so much 
like off the shelf product stuff from them either. So you could theoretically, if you if you don't care about licensing, like well, not care in the sense like it's not not like your code. If you only want to like all the other big companies just the just taking all the open source code, you could take an L4 kernel, um, which I think has a BSD license if you wanted to. Maybe I mean some are maybe GPL, some are BSD or whatever, and then um, create those drivers. Take and by the way, this licensing wise, should be completely fine, right? Because um, you have a BSD kernel and the kernel, for example, of course, the Linux kernel has really many drivers. You could actually refactor them. So you could take the drivers. The only problem is it remains GPL, right? One thing that I would maybe somewhat kind of prefer, if I would write this from scratch, I would maybe do a GPL plus like owning the copyright, but to be, to be able to license it to other companies on a commercial basis. So like community is GPL and free, you can use it. I mean, preferable buy some subscription support stuff to finance the development. And it's GPL, but G, like dual, like similar maybe to QT, like GPL, but licensable for commercial binary only kind of something use if, if you want to for an access point, a car, automotive, navigation system or a satellite or a space station or whatnot um, combining the best of two worlds if you take the linux kernel for the drivers but then you don't have this like you don't own the copyright to license it for commercial binary only use on your well you could still cash in like for subscription and support and development just not like hundred percently non-open licensing if you need these options for some projects. However, maybe this is not even such a bad uh, thing uh, or it's, uh, actually not such a problematic thing. You could probably use those GPL drivers because, again, you would have all those drivers separately, right? You would have your network driver as per you can watch if you're interested in and we will for sure, if you're interested in this, we will for sure. I, I will anyway continue with this. Even if I don't sell it, I had here already um, this sketches here of some stuff that you can see more discussed in previous videos if you look for microkernels in my channel. So it's not a licensing issue if you have those running in user space, right? Um, they are not linking with anything else. They are running as freestanding process. You, you could have some Linux kernel compatible API shim to run those drivers like a keyboard driver, like a USB storage driver. So you could probably reuse parts. And your kernel could be BSD or BSD commercial or whatever, and still your user space processes could be whatever license. And um, then you could also reuse the 3D drivers if you wanted to. And because everything is so nicely separated, right? If you eventually want to sell it for something, like say SpaceX wants to license it because it's just so amazing, right? Speaking hypothetic hypothetically, you could still rewrite this, right? You could say, okay, you have say like three GPL drivers because you have wrapped them from the Linux kernel. And then, you, yeah, okay, SpaceX comes along and says, yeah, okay, we license this because we need something micro kernel and real time and whatever. And then you can just, you have, you have everything, your own drivers and just like three GPL stuff and you just like re rewrite them from scratch um, for that project. And from then, and for just giving some examples how you could stack this kind of development there and yes yeah, so there are as you see there are many pros and cons if you do everything from scratch it will take forever you will not have all the drivers if you uh, reuse linux drivers then they are gpl obviously unless of course some drivers are actually bsd gpl bsd license right some like amd gpu driver i think and some others are shared with bsd and they are gpl or bsd i think something of that sort questions in the audience cyan asks uh, language you're using you probably mean programming language, right? If you ask questions, I have the recurring issue not only with this comment, but also on other comments on my YouTube videos. Um, always ask longer questions because with this question, I don't know, do you mean in general in the office or do you mean for this microkernel talk? If you mean in general in the office, I use a lot. Uh, we use sometimes C, but we don't prefer it. We, you know, if we work with Linux kernel and open source stuff like this. So I, of course, I can do C. Um, and a C, we usually use more C++. We also use Objective-C for the Apple stuff. Um, 
we use assembler and also we do a lot of scripting so shell scripting and um and lure and nowadays in javascript but we avoid this so yeah many languages for for a microkernel i would probably use a light version of c plus plus most likely because i'm not the greatest fan of rust and i don't see that many benefits of rust mostly making similar to all the modern C++ features maybe making life more complicated than necessary and um, not really gaining much. Especially, I, I think mostly the for the Linux for the for the kernel Rust benefits are not very high, if you ask me. Uh, fun fact: I recently tried to package Swift, the uh, Apple language, and this is hilarious. Um, that is just like yesterday with the Git source tables when you try to build Swift from source, it needs an LLVM checkout. And so you can't like, I, Rust, Rust and Mesar and Ceiling, you can build against the installed headers and link against the shared objects. And Swift apparently you can't. So probably they do some tighter integration there. So for Swift, you couldn't, I couldn't build it without having a, a, com, a complete compiled ceiling uh, LLVM source to next to it. That was a little bit annoying. So uh, Swift still not packaged. So um, yeah, probably lightweight C++, I would say, or something. Although, uh, unless I set already some crazy ideas, the benefit, of course, with having that in user space is you could just in time compile it, right? So you could write it in some, uh, you could either write it in C++, you could make a special flavor of, um, I was actually thinking maybe I even try this. So um, for all the amazing stuff, so you see we are a little bit in devs channel here, although sometimes building the audience, I just speak as some um, general high level ideas if we are not writing a low level code, but otherwise I would probably try to write some small just in time compiler for risk five, just for the fun of it, maybe for for Lua maybe, but not sure. Um, because I was thinking very theoretically, you could even, if you want to get started with this and you would want to just in time compile your user space, you could make a test and start with WebAssembly. I think, I've not used it much, but I would think there is, so there is a, um, I guess that would be just in time compiled, right? So there is a backend for ceiling. And so probably you could, make a Unix like Linux like userland like all the shell and SED LS and all the other fun command line programs compile them to WebAssembly and run them just in time compiled probably if of course you need some system call um, obstruction for portable system call calling because they are all slightly different on all the architecture so you would need to have some normalization layer for system calls system calls like read write kill, fork, and fun stuff like that. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, that would be one pro prototype uh, step. So yeah, many ideas. So the problem is, of course, um, this is, of course, a huge development. This is why I outlined some possible sh uh, shortcuts in that regard. It's, of course, why have I not done this? Of course, I'm totally aware um, that this is a monstrous project. I will, will continue with some low-level stuff, maybe even today with my Voodoo text chat triangle demo there just for the fun of it and then more microkernel low-level demo stuff. And um, then of course, nowadays the, the users want application compatibility, right? So in the beginning you would not have Photoshop or um, stuff. The only benefit is nowadays I think this point is getting more and more unimportant because nowadays so much is happening in the browser. So basically if you have one super high performance, which by the way, uh, let's see, can I reproduce uh, this? This is also hilarious that... Um, Let's see if that, oops. Yeah, I think, yeah. You see how long this browser refresh is also hilarious. 
this is I don't I don't know what I, I already killed so I'm running the old-fashioned X composition manager I have no idea why this Firefox window um, I think I did I show yeah you it, it takes like three four seconds to re-render um, I have no idea why and this is this was even not 10 or 20 years ago even on a p3 that was better performing I have no idea why the some of the Linux UI performance stuff is so bad nowadays um, Anyway, so application, in my opinion, for most people, not as important anymore. And very theoretically, so the benefit is, of course, if you if you reuse as much open source stuff as possible, you could, of course, use Wine for Windows uh, compatibility and um, integrate it even so that a lot of stuff would just work. And, um, of course, there are a couple of Linux distributions. Um, one is elementary or something, and there was also... Of course, some, there are also some people who copy the Mac UI in Objective-C, uh, like uh, Ecolier or something. And there's also someone, there's some, some people who go together and write a Mac OS API abstraction compatibility like Wine. So like Wine for Linux for Windows API binary compatibility. There are people who are starting a Mac layer for that. But it's not. It's right now only capable of running a couple of command line programs, not like iMovie or not even Preview or something. But very theoretically, if you really wanted to, you could even ship some really polished kind of, not like Unix kind of, but more like macOS kind of integrated experience, even with Windows. And in the future, if you would work together with them, even maybe with some basic Mac compatibility shim layer um, just for some sorts and uh, yeah in a way of course a little bit like chrome os just not like from google and um, yeah dave says you need a stable api for desktop i know people complaining about windows and win32 but it has been working for the last year also so fun fact for exact scan on windows we use exactly that right i don't use the new apis very theoretically our exact scan build may be supporting windows xp at least at some point, I did not sure if we switched some Visual C something studio setting, but um, we could. Um, well, the Windows 30, well, the, of course, we abstracted everything away, right? So I said this already, I showed some secret source. So we have some portable runtime stuff and we have some basic abstraction for Windows, Linux and Mac, and we run everything else in Lua, similar to World of Warcraft and Adobe Lightroom. And uh, th this is why I know that uh, for example, this file, there are like three file net notification APIs also, um, and all of them sucked. And also, um, for example, one issue that was, I mentioned this before, we have support for like UI character input, like Asian languages, just like there is some API to tell Windows where this uh, character panel thing should pop up, but doesn't work. I spent literally a whole week working on this and it's still always popping up in zero zero coordinates in the I think top left corner or something um, I have no idea why this doesn't work I, I tried one week with this a, a year ago I already gave up on this like the Chinese people need to enter the text in the top left corner for notes not further bothering with this right now but um, as you see the amazing APIs right yeah there is some and yes we use this as well and yeah it works sort of kind of and you can make a lot of stuff work but some things are also pain right like this character UI display whatever the name for that was and file notification like three APIs and all of them not amazing and yeah but I agree I agree with you that this is exactly the thing Linux has some APIs but the biggest problem with Linux is already that some APIs are stable like x11 API or libc API and kernel API but or OpenGL API but it is already the issue that you have so many uh, G, uh, graphical UI tool because right you have GTK, Qt um, and Fox and WX widgets and certainly hundred in between that I not not to mention classic XT that looked like crap or Lestif and Motif and all the other fun stuff in between left and right. Um, on our client still using DOS 16 bit protected mode for apps in NT that is what kind of that is uh, fascinating what kind of application would that be? Um, Elementary OS is building common audience Ubuntu sync application are using Walla, which is basically clone of the CR Walla. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so 
The problem is, um, yeah, motive people are laughing in the audience. <laughs> it's, hey, I have uh, one moment. I Longer than I thought to find it in the exact code, li exact code library. They were a little bit hidden in the uh, further away corner. So back in the day, for the young people among us, so this is how you did programming. This is wow. This is neon green. So okay, my camera colors are totally shitty, but the HDMI captures also really somehow not really sure. If the anyway, so um, uh, not one. So this is like X toolkit um, and. Oh yeah, this camera color's ugly. And so yeah, so this is how you did programming before there was Stack Overflow and um, and and Google. And we brought them new here, my friend and I. Uh, yeah, when we when I still lived in my parents' basement. So they, this books are 20 years old, and this was probably the most expensive. So because we got into Linux, internet was V90 modem, and we everything you had to you had to read everything from scratch, right? And so yeah, not making this shit up if you think I fantasize my stuff here together. So yeah, volume 5, X toolkit, uh, reference, X11 release 4 and 5, um, R4 and 5, X toolkit. And so basically we also didn't know, so we had to, we had to in Germany special order them. And um, yeah, so the books were not the most amazing, uh, I have to say. Also X, this, this low level X development sucked big S. We were extremely disappointed. Xlib reference manual for version 11. So yeah, um, Exacode, one of the most amazing companies on earth, and Xlib programming manual version 11. Yeah, so and yeah, this this sucked so much. It was unbelievable. Um, yeah, before iconifying and after and whatnot. And yeah, so Xlib pr direct programming was a waste of time and money. Um, and um, yeah, so this is why I'm really so you see, so but I probably so what maybe comments the audience. So, what do you not really that if like all of you should I uh, what would what mean what what would you would like what would you personally prefer most? Would you personally prefer a more polished Linux distribution? Would you prefer? A more like haiku or something from scratch. Um, some not like if you say something, I will do it then, just like as an indication um, what other people are thinking. And um, financial, so uh, that is um, to a client for some statistical application. So interesting that you would do this in, in that. Um, also, another fun fact um, the other day, what did I. What? Um, ah, yeah, right. I wanted to. So, for example, Windows. So, I have a couple of Windows VMs, obviously, for, I mean, mostly Windows VMs for also our Windows development or re reverse engineering, logging some USB or network data. And I've, the other thing so, you, you install a couple of software and you have so many background uh, services running. And then each time I, one of those VMs, where I installed a couple of Windows drivers uh, for, for scanners and stuff. And um, then when you when you start Windows. So each time I start this now, first of all, you have like zero control what is going on, right? You install like a Canon driver, a Vision driver, a Fujitsu driver, and then you will Windows, you, you log in and already you see a couple of windows like popping up and just like a command exit prompt here and there you're like, what the heck is this stuff even doing everything? And so this is a whole Windows each time I feel like I install a handful of software and I feel like, like, oh my God, what is going on in this Windows? It's like, I would not want to use this each and every day with, I don't even know what under the hood is uh, with all this um, foreign drivers doing something that whatever they are doing there. 
I also don't know why why does uh, our XX can why do people um, like our XX can because it's a nicely integrated experience without 500 megabyte of videos. It's like 18 megabyte compressed with 500 drivers, and usually if you have a halfway decent scanner, it just works. And that is just not the case for this Windows stuff, right? On Windows, you plug something in, doesn't work, you install. Some of the features I even sometimes don't get working with reading the manual, some of the esoteric features. So in exact scan, you plug this in together and it just works. And yeah, on, on the Windows driver, but it's not a Windows thing. It's just like some, some big corporations develop a little bit strange uh, software. And um, let's see comments in the audience. Um, not another new solution. I would like to see Heiko succeed. It's really amazing. I know it sounds like stuck work, but a really very good idea in verse. Yeah, so I said this already uh, back in the day. I, I even purchased some BOS personal edition something, one of the nearly last that existed there. I said this before from all the vintage stuff. I This is the only thing I don't know where it is. Maybe my parents have thrown it away. I, I don't know. I threw it away or... And... Um, yeah, DTARC, not another Linux distribution, and yeah, so I always joke already there are 1,001 1, Linux distributions, so yeah. Um, I, I will most likely, so in any case, whatever, whatever maybe we just do, um, as I said, um, maybe we should just go into gaming and make a couple of games and become millionaire. Um, or just if this is somehow not what we want to do, at least do some pro productivity tools like ExactScan and OCRKit that people, because then you can sell to Windows and Mac users, right? And don't need to convince them to abandon everything. Um, maybe the most logical stuff. Uh, by the way, I also wanted to say something about Google Fuchsia or how you should pronounce this, but um, this is probably something we should say for another video to keep them here not too long. And um, Stephen, welcome. I was looking at taking T2 and then using that as a base system with UI with something like Snap package to install package or so base OS is stable and then people can install what they want. Okay, and taking T2. Yeah, so another uh, I'm using, gonna use for this Broccoli. I think this is a similar question. So I, I said this already before, but probably you just joined. Uh, I would probably most likely um, continue with lightweight C++. I would, in the even in the bare metal low-level DOS examples for I, I really wonder if I should continue by uh, so you have so still the ADAT card which by the way which uh, oh yeah this was a digi32 um, I would most likely would want to have textured triangles working on the voodoo and this is the rendition variety of course that I still have here I hope I it still works after I took it out of the static back already three times for random videos um, also yes yeah, the, the problem is I think the, the biggest problem in the Linux community is always not invented here. This is also why we already got GTK plus and QT. And then, um, by the way, is the camera even focused? Somehow not entirely, whatever it focused on again, uh, auto focus this way. Anyway, head it off. Not invented here, then Red Hat Suze, everyone needs to do their own stuff. And then the second problem is, uh, and that is maybe in the last, why did in the last decade, my personal opinion, the Linux desktop not advance even more, is because we still have this X windowing system where everything is not going through direct, directly, direct kind of inter process communication and going over this pseudo network stuff still. If we would have a more directly mapped uh, composition manager stuff like Wayland for a longer time, then maybe the desktop experience would also be already more amazing because I mean uh, what is even going on here with this redraw performance right so this is here um, trying to redraw and it's seriously with 64 gigabyte of ROM 16 threads 8 cores I have no idea what it is doing oh is it not maybe moving it delays it further maybe moving it prevents any event processing for some anyway but even if I don't move it it takes some Four seconds, anyway, strange. Hello, did I even, yeah, I did, whatever. So I have no idea why, also why, why are browsers still so slow on Linux? I mean, Firefox and Chrome are not shining the most here with uh, performance. So yeah, I think that the XOX server and the Valent, that the switch there 
was not somehow forced. I mean, most people still don't run Wayland, right? Do you? I mean, I tried it a couple of times. For me, it didn't work out too well. Not really sure if anyone runs Wayland. Um, yeah, so Wayland, it's like next year everyone will use Wayland for 10 years already. I agree. And um, that is um, stalled also. And again, it's, I think the, the reoccurring point here is always two things. Not invented here, syndrome, and rewriting everything just because rewriting everything. This was the case with GNOME from, well, GNOME 1 to GNOME 2. I think many people already hate it. And then GNOME 2 to, uh, what, GNOME 3, I guess, or maybe, uh, probably, is that even more people hate it. And then also this Ubuntu, Ubuntu whatever that was, I even forgot what was in Unity. Uh, yeah, and then on the Q, uh, KDE side also, I think KDE was doing better until, I mean, the KDE 1, 2, 3, I think, was mostly transitional, okay. And then I think the biggest issue with KDE was KDE, was it 5 or so, 4, 5? I, something this plasma, something that was super slow and if you didn't hit a state-of-the-art computer and GPU or something, maybe in the meantime it became better, I heard. But, um, yeah, so... This is the same, the same with the Linux kernel, always rewrite some API, rewrite some API, and then it, stuff breaks, stuff breaks, same with KDE and GNOME, and then we have applications stuck, not loading, not supported, not this, not, not this, not that, not that, and it's the same in the Linux kernel, in um, GTK, uh, Qt, GNOME, KDE, and yeah, I think this is probably, if, if there would have more like Windows, you could argue, yeah, but innovation. But what has innovation brought us? Innovation has brought us so much fragmentation that the market share in the desktop is at 2% or 1.x% and so much to innovation. And the innovation where um, redrawing a window takes where is it? four seconds. I'm seriously not touching this here. It ends a year. Did I already? Yeah, I... I don't know what's wrong with this. It's, and this was not the case until recently. I, I don't even know with which. Maybe it's some GTK3 or may, maybe, yes, I transitioned to JTK3, maybe. But I, I don't know, whatever. And yeah, in any case, Firefox performance not the most outstanding and yeah, Chrome maybe, yeah, at least some, the, the web getting more complicated and maybe Firefox not the most optimized for this anymore. Um, Dave says Unicode was correctly, they got it right and then dropped it. Yeah, one thing, I'm, I don't know what, the one detail of Unity I didn't like very much, I didn't like the, at least the icons at the side that I think were the default looked, in my opinion, really ugly. The rest, I don't know, but um, this icon dock thing looked really strange, but maybe the brown also, but this really was a, but I never used it, I only saw it a couple of times, so no, you know. Yeah. Um, Probably I continue with some uh, voodoo texturing fun over the weekend and a couple of other st stuff to still to do. Um, and just measure the size of the whole Haiku repo that's currently always userland and a bunch of apps including browser at 727. So that is the source, right, I guess. And um, Mir, yes, I remember Mir. And, and um, size of the whole Haiku repository, probably, yeah. Yeah, not sure, but with Haiku, the only thing is, if, if, yeah, if, um, if, if it comes down to Haiku as the best choice right now, then of course I have nothing to program, right? Then you can say, okay, Haiku is there, uh, contributes. The problem is also this, then, then we come back to the problem where I made the video already, um, some time ago that, how to earn money then with them because then okay other people have built it up if if we agree now we want to make this some experience it comes down to the same recurring issue with how well then of course the uh, authors can make money with that um but or maybe it would also be more successful if there would be some kind of cooperation really pushing it commercially integrated in a way um with with, with something with hardware. This is by the way another point that I would would want to, if, if we have some grand vision of some OS amazingly working, similar to how Mac OS was before Apple has over the last years developed so many peak bugs, that stuff is integrated in the sense of phone integration, of notification, of 
airdrop kind of, you know, like open drop and all this kind of fun integrations that people find amazing these days. And um, yeah, I have it uh, literally probably, yeah, central Berlin. What should I say? <sighs> Global warming and stuff. People needing help, recurring theme here. And um, yeah, I tried uh, Haiku. I have it uh, here. Maybe even let's, I uh, don't want to disclose the uh, reasons that I zoom out here is not to disclose uh, all the files I'm flying around of reverse engineering and other stuff in family, but maybe I have here, do I have here? Um, but maybe not on this, maybe on Maybe only on the server. Come, can you redraw Firefox? Anyway, yeah, I know what is uh, just the point of making a YouTube video about this another day. But um, yeah, the package menu is amazing. Uh, all overlay checkpoints, it's, uh, graphics is amazing. Audio subsystem is great, etc. Uh, yeah, but by the way, do you use it then uh, each and every day as a daily driver already? And yeah, I mean, BOS back in the day was uh, really amazing. I know very well the demos I showed here. I even like copied the LED stuff for LED load, RGB LEDs on, on my x86 PC. I was very well aware of uh, B-Box from magazines and BOS, I said I even had it back in the day. And yeah, there was also QNX, right? So uh, on other microkernels, so QNX is also a microkernel system. It's not like performant real-time operating system could not be done in the form of QNX, but if we agree that uh, Haiku is the way to go, then we uh, need some plan to yeah, make that happen. But then again, then I have less to write. And the problem then the problem is that is a little bit the problem of um, of open source, right? Other people have built it up. So either we could like it, what I criticize that other people like even unrate, like they go and take Linux kernel or whatever they take. I don't know, but I think Linux or IBM or Red, well, Red Hat contributed a lot, but they also took a lot, took a lot and commercialized it a lot. Um, then the question is, are we those dicks who take Haiku and commercialize it? Or how should there be, be some structure? Um, you could, of course, try to make it so like estable, establish some commercial support and then make it so big that you can finance those developers that you are totally, that they are totally happy, happy with you. Like, like let's say, uh, it's probably like loosely organized, I guess, with I saw there's some donation and some paying some developers from the donation and stuff. But let's say we, we want to commercialize this because we think it's a vision and the future. And we need, obviously, if we want to make this a Microsoft kind of Apple-like of business, like with Next Step, then someone like us or whoever would need to come now and say, oh, we make this big business, amazingly integrated, sell it with support and everything. And then either you become those who say like, yeah, they stole everything from us, or you need to try to make it so that you really have enough income to pay those developers for full-time work, that everyone is in an amazing love affair there. But this kind of stuff certainly ain't easy. And um, then of course, adding this, adding this up uh, with applications. But there we have again the problem of last year's video, how to make a living with open source. Because even if you have the grand vision of we make this as amazing as Mac OS as it once was, just like better than it is today, amazingly super integrated, totally working with support and outstanding and the best and everything, then how to make this a commercial endeavor. And if you want to be this entrepreneur who like me now to make this happen, then if you take a project, if you're not writing this from scratch, like I outlined here, if you do this with Heiko, then the big question is like how to do it so that everyone is well. You, you could start writing them, hey, hello, this is amazing. Uh, can we team partner to commercialize this somehow that everyone is totally amazing and has a job and living and food and eat and stuff. But yeah, I know it's MIT lessons, but I don't want to fork it, right? It's not like I want to take it and like run with it. Um, I would then prefer, it because then we have the same problem. If this, then we have like maybe 10 Haiku versions. I mean, this may, maybe also not helping everyone um, except when we want to do it. Anyway, I will, anyway, this is, I wanted to, outline here this the problem of getting an operating system to the masses, right? I mean, besides the problem of actually writing it or gathering it together from other open source 
uh, bits and pieces. And then also, I mean, not of only, well, writing it from scratch is totally expensive, right? A couple of people, a couple of years. And um, a at least, I mean, not counting 3D uh, awesomeness, unless you, Mazar and or AMD drivers are also partially MIT or BSD or whatever, uh, something of that sort, or yeah, something of that sort. And so yeah, you could reuse it, but all the stuff also then, of course, if it's something completely new, um, how to make it, bring it on the market. Maybe the, actually maybe one of the more easier things is to just take Chrome and like sell an unbranded Chrome without like, like, like fork Chrome, which anyway you need like Chrome OS and like build, build it of its Linux anyway. So like take Chrome and make it better and like, like show Google the f famous Linus finger and say, you know what, what you can do in the Silicon Valley, we can do too. And like build it with T2 and make it like totally amazingly built and uh, support it much more devices like on a commercial scale and just take all the Google telemetry out and like optimize uh, like, like this Intel clear Linux, like op optimize the heck out of it and like make it a totally non Google amazing experience and like like copy Apple marketing in this regard, like say, hey, we are, we did Linux for 20 years and now we make here the most amazing browser based Linux OS experience of 2020 or something. And then of course the usual Apple marketing, like the most reliable, stable, tested, and we value privacy and don't send to Google and yada, 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 the usual stuff. And um, I mean, very theoretically, uh, you could even start with uh, Linux. And in like, if you say, okay, I'm a Linux person for 20 years. We, we fork Chrome and make it amazing. And if, or even actually, by the way, with, with the Android stuff, right? We, we could even, if you would want to be like as visionary as Mark Zuckerberg, well, visionary, not visionary, right? More, more visionary like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk takes this Chrome and make it amazing and makes this integrated with a custom build of Android and then make it like a totally amazing because Actually, Android, I'm not the totally most satisfied with this Android, but that is for another video. Um, and actually try to fight Google and Apple with their own weapons there in terms of open Google, but just more supported. And then Google, where with the drivers, like set up it so that you can push to supported phones independently of the vendors longer updates with the privacy privacy aspect of Apple like we don't send it to Google it's totally more privacy and yeah just I mean some random sorting so so many possibilities but it boils down certainly why have I not done this man besides I run a Linux distribution right but why have I not started something more it's of course you see it's a huge investment and not easy to sell and people don't want to necessarily spend money for an operating system which is also Apple made it for free, right? Windows right now, I don't know how long they want to update Windows 10. And Android is sort of for free. So if you want to make the most amazing stuff you have in this day and age, it's not like you sell Windows licenses for $2.99 anymore or Mac OS for, fun fact, back in the day you could buy a Mac OS, right? Which due to the Hackintosh stuff most likely is why they stopped paid Mac updates because then they can always say it's this integrated Mac stuff and you don't get it independently for, I actually, fun fact, have a couple of Mac boxes from back in the day. So yeah, this is probably um, the same for, it's probably not the best to run a YouTube channel because our commercial software certainly has more revenue than this unsuccessful YouTube channel. It's the same for operating system, probably best stick to our productivity stuff because that is what we can uh, pay fancy lemonade from. And coffee but um, yeah just some random thoughts it's always like yeah you, you, there's so much stuff like on Linux not amazing on Mac OS not amazing on Windows not amazing and on Android not amazing it could be done better but yeah how to finance it and where to start where to end how to market it has, has had even a chance and so on um, there are many forks of Chrome already uh, comments, in the, comments in the audience think it would be difficult for it to get much uptake um, yeah, maybe, but it's also always marketing, right? I mean, how, who is really using this? Um, 
It's always, if you make this in commercial fair, for example, nowadays in, in Germany, they just decided that due to the terms and conditions and end user, end user license agreement, um, public offices, government or, or schools or all of them, something of that sort, cannot legally use uh, Microsoft products because of the clauses of sending data to the US and storage and privacy and whatnot. So if you start, as we are in Germany, if we start in Germany, say, hey, this is an amazing OS for the German market and for the government, and it's Google and Linux compatible, and it's amazing, and you get the market share here in those who maybe need a solution now, um, then you might have some commercial base to further grow it internationally from there. Um, not really sure how many there are, are in forks of Chrome that are, um, th this is also the problem with the Linux kernel, right? This is outdated Android Linux kernel and the not as amazing binary only support stuff. One of the big re reasons why the Android updates are not the most amazing there. The, the problem of those binary only drivers for 3D and um, then I really, and this is the biggest thing you see, this is the biggest Linux problem, reoccurring Linux problem, uh, changing APIs and then your drivers don't work, which I start already, I don't want binary drivers, binary only drivers to start with myself, but when you already have them, I really wonder how Google cannot manage to keep, um, but maybe they don't want to keep the, the Android kernel API stuff for the graphic drivers in a way stable that you could ship Android updates for like five years. Why can Google not do this? I but maybe they don't have the vision, the overview, maybe um, either it's intentionally or they, they are just not very intelligent. I don't know, but Leafy, if what, what do you think? Is, is it intentionally that they, but as much critiques they get for, I, I have the feeling it can't be, um, it can't be intentionally because it's in a way so stupid that it's, it's too stupid to be in, uh, intentionally. Um, that being said, it's probably, um, I was in, maybe the problem is always, um, of course, I, I sometimes have some background background uh, information. For example, I was in conference calls with people from Google, probably I better not, probably I can't say this uh, in the A like stuff, so I probably better not say too much. So without much context, but it's, it's a real story, but I don't say more because legal reasons and the the conference call ongoing over a year with some project of some collaboration stuff of which I shall not further name and the Google feedback was not very amazing so like the people were often not very listening have no, often if you ask them something like uh, could you repeat this because they clearly were busy with writing some other code or something and then over over a year or two they have like it was always like it should be some cooperation with Google and they should always use a tool. And at the end, it was clear like they always, or Google only participated, well, was is our impression that Google only participated um, to hear what's going on, but they most likely never intended to really use it. So at the end they said, okay, two years, nice talking. Uh, was by the way, it was not a company project, it's something other external something. Um, but yeah, so at the end, it didn't continue with Google hours. Right now, they they did, did other things, and uh, yeah, so it, it was like a totally hilarious uh, conference call experience. And uh, during the time, so it was using some Internet of Things APIs. That was was it Google at one time? It was Google Weave, I think. What is it? Is it currently Google Weave? The problem. So during the time, like two years of it was a couple of years ago, like two two years ago. Um, during the time they changed the Internet of, Internet of Things APIs uh, multiple times, like, was, was, hey, by the way, folks, there are some changes, we changed this and that, and, um, and it was like hilarious, like each, each half a year we had to write, rewrite code because the Google people kept changing their Internet of Things stuff, like, what was it before Weave, was it, whatever it was before Weave, I start to lose so many. Um, yeah, and it's so there, there you see I, the last years with conference calls, I learned a lot how big corporations work and some often they don't work that amazingly and like we change this and oh by the way we broke this and we rename this oh by the way we don't do this anymore because this marketing reason or this business reason and oh by the way this is what we have worked for six months we cancel because we are not interested anymore and it's like it's hilarious uh, with big companies. 
Um, but I should probably not say more, not, not like I didn't, didn't say what it was about, probably shouldn't. But it's two years ago, but you never know, then everyone gets pissed. Probably if the Google people who were in the conference, if they hear how negative I summarize this, they maybe get pissed anyway, but hey, you, you, did, you did everything and you not really to contribute amazingly, so what should I say now? And yeah, probably they don't watch this live stream anyway, but um, you never know. And then Google, people from Google never talk to, to you because you on the live stream on YouTube, you said the conference calls were not amazing. Um, so more comments, it's true for every attempt to creating a new OS, actually I was mistaken, the Google High Repository is on 50 megabyte master branch, but this probably does not include the V8 and JavaScript engine and um, the B, what is it, the browser is B something, B whatever, B, B browse, B, B whatever, I cool. be something, be also yeah, maybe first of all with our typo or auto correction and be whatever was it be. So why does it, did I really write this so wrong? Anyway, probably should write some code. Browser be hacked, what? Web positive, is it web positive? Could be web positive. Um, yeah, interesting, that's a browser, which code base they use for that. But um, yeah, of course, writing an OS from scratch is uh, the most fun. Uh, forking others code is not the most fun. And I have some cold coffee, which certainly is also not the most fun. Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, ideas, um, amazing that so many people tuned in. And I will probably unpack the voodoo or either, maybe I could actually try to what what do you want to see more uh, texturing uh, colored and textured triangles on the voodoo or but probably you say voodoo because voodoo is more popular right i m not only well could do this with the rendition variety but um there i need to load the firmware that is more fiddling stuff the voodoo is already working for the most part and yeah i guess voodoo it is her huh? But maybe I test the rendition variety if the old XORG, XORG driver works. But the dr graphic driver situation is also, in my opinion, not amazing. I think uh, this is too, too separated in the Linux kernel world that you have the kernel driver. Well, in old fashioned times you didn't. In the old fashioned times you only had the user space X driver and maybe a 3D driver. Then they moved parts in the kernel driver. And now you have like a three part like kernel driver, um, even mode setting, which I think is a mistake in the kernel. You see, everything and then sometimes with some flanky connections you don't even get display because that is doing link training on digital links like dvi or displayport hdmi stuff it's doing link training for the differential uh, pairs there's this high speed theory pairs and uh, for signal to noise ratio and all this kind of and, and interference and um, and crosstalk and stuff and um, so I, I had occasions where I booted and I didn't have display output because the link training failed, right? And it, also it's hilarious that the link training doesn't choose a smaller resolution, less bandwidth, or yet yeah, try harder is always easier to, t maybe the link is so distorted with noise that it can't train harder, but at least it should get some lower, like lower resolution. I mean, something must, I mean, of course, usually if you start it again and again and again, usually it works eventually, but in my, my opinion, it's also hilarious. It's you. I, I think it even oops, right? I think maybe it even oopses, like link training failed, like giving up oops, like yeah, not amazing. And um, and this makes it also really hard to develop, right? You need to develop one part in the kernel, one maybe a part in the XOR server, depending on if you have some isolated XOR driver part, and then the 3D driver, and yeah, really many paces need to interact back and forth, and. Yeah, a little bit not nice to develop and error prone and yeah, all this stuff you can imagine. So I would, in the microkernel world of my sketch there, I would, mm, so not only would I not have any kernel stuff in the kernel because it's a microkernel, I would prefer to have a more kind of Windows server process, probably similar to macOS with some 3D driver stuff in there in the user space. That even in Windows is nowadays a little bit more user space. Again, I mean, fun fact in Windows 3. Point, Windows NT 3. Point something. It was the graphics subsystem was already a user space kind of user space. 
sorry, process or something. And then only for performance reasons, I think they moved it back, Microsoft moved it back into the kernel with Windows NT4. And um, for performance reasons and only um, only later with, was it Wister or 7 or something, they moved it back to some more separate user space process. Also for if this graphics subsystem crashes, you can restart it again with is of course amazing that you can restart. I mean, not amazing when it crashes, but at least you can restart it, which is better than nothing, certainly. So yeah, one more comment, and then I guess it's time to call it a day. What's your definition of OS, for example? Yeah, I know um, the usual OS definition with uh, UI, and um, the problem is I don't find many parts amazing. I mean, of, of course, OS is the whole part. That's probably what most people agree on, that OS is the, the whole composition of whatever um, parts make the kernel with the surrounding libraries that form a fully functional whatever is of course for a network OS you don't need UI but for desktop OS of course the desktop stuff is would be part of the UI and that was reverted with Wister what do you have um, yeah Wister okay thanks for that uh, run for example, if you run Windows UI and run on Linux kernel, now it is currently mass of users UI as the US and even more so. What? I think I need to read off. And for example, if you take Windows UI and run on Linux kernel, in my opinion, the current mass of users UI is the OS even more so nowadays. Well, I would still say the whole. So you mean only the UI is OS? No, I, the OS is. I would say more the kernel part is OS, but as I said, in the end user operating system, the whole composition with the windowing and UI stuff, in my opinion, should be counted as an OS. I mean, with I mean, just the UI libraries, it's they're not an operating system. I mean, it's, it's it's only the UI libraries, but you have you kernel and more user space management stuff, programs and UI stuff that form as a whole operating system. Um, Dieter says, in, in his opinion, since uh, approaching see help for Weiss, by the way, you know what, let's make here as we are trying to grow, by the way, nearly approaching 3,400 subscribers, you all guys rock for sharing, like and subscribing, it's amazing. So Dieter, I made you a uh, moderator because I'm tired to be the only one who clicks here this comments for approval. And um, so don't misuse it, right? <laughs> Um, not sure about network stack, but uh, sound and video stacks are back in user mode since Vista. Yeah, not not sure about that, but at least uh, the UI, the kernel, uh, the graphic stuff I heard. Um, so detailed writes, um, in a, I'm proposing as a commercial project, writing a whole new kernel from scratch is a mistake. It will never be financially viable unless you have a market and financial. So um, I agree a little bit. Uh, I agree, dis disagree a little bit. Um, but <laughs> if you misuse your administrative rights, I will take it back. Um, I, I disagree a little bit with that in that kind. If you write uh, a small or a kernel um, for a limited scope, for example, just networking or embedded, I think this is this can very well be a very good commercial success. For example, um, as I said, access, access points, uh, DOCSIS, cable modems, where they sometimes use whatever. So if you start with this, I think you can make it very, uh, or like scanners running in scanners and su such. By the way, fun fact, uh, when we did uh, embedded Linux, I tried to get in some scanners when this, um, I tried like 2005, like 10, 10 decade ago, I tried to get Linux in scanners from like Avision and, and you know, the, Nobody ever wanted Linux in the scanners. Um, so I agree in that if you want to make this an end-user OS like a Mac OS, it, it is extremely hard to make successful, uh, especially if you, um, if you are not yet Microsoft or Apple. Um, if Apple writes something from scratch today, they could probably make it successful, except they have peak bugs and all the limits of T2 security. So in that regard, I think even Apple would not be successful because I, from what I hear with all my peers, friends and family and developers, many people are not the most satisfied, similar to my experience with Mac OS and Mac hardware anymore. So given this security surroundings with Macs and Hackintosh, maybe even Apple's would not be successful. But if they would have done this 10 years ago, I think they 
would have been successful. But um, I agree with the rest. Also, if, if I, for example, I will most likely, so some, some microkernel stuff I will just do for the fun of it, just with expanding this. As I said, I will most likely continue to make small, like not, like not fully blown up drivers, just like some small voodoo example, some small, I have already S3 virtual, but finish the voodoo example, maybe make a Matrox example, make maybe, maybe even because I have my brothers from the basement, uh, NVIDIA, Reva, TNT, something, 128 or Reva, Reva, TNT2, maybe even from the PlayStation RSX, maybe a small DOS NVIDIA example, just for the sake of it. Uh, just to show uh, uh, NVIDIA the similar finger of, you know what, you don't give a specification, we can still write low-level examples to educate people. And um, I will try what I said, always said already, I will try to keep this like header only, like very small uh, codes that you can re reuse either on DOS for DOS games and demos and stuff. Um, and maybe I even make it so that you can use the same code. I hope I can speak over the horn there. Um, even make it so that you can use this on Linux. Maybe I even try with the Voodoo and Rendition Variety because you can m access the memory mapped I.O. In, in Linux from the user space, no problem. The Xorg server always did this, even still to do, does it? So I can even try to make this code on run on DOS, DOS bare metal low level, as well as on Linux in user space, just for the fun of it. And then the most logical step is, of course, make a non-Linux freestanding microkernel demo just for some multitasking graphic performance demo and uh, stuff. And um, this examples could even, um, as I said, so many people, uh, so many drivers, they even bit wrote in Linux, like even this bit wrote it, right? The, the edit card here, this does right now, I hacked already, I, I corrected this a little bit. So it, this is broken in Linux. Um, RME Digi32, uh, you've seen this in previous videos, I hacked already a couple of times. Also, uh, I hacked already maybe eight hours on this, didn't earn a single cent so much to make any money with this. So I will keep this examples like usable in different contexts and try to build like some Rosetta code like header library. Of course not fully featured, right? Not, not like high performance, but just like usable learn learning examples of how, how to do this and people can always add to this, right? If they want to like the so 8-bit guy write a new voodoo game for DOS because they uh, like it, they could use it as a base and, and build on, on this if they wanted to maybe eventually. And yeah, then also this code shared and maybe even with Linux, like this, this is drivers bit rotten. Uh, maybe it makes sense to make some frameworks that you could use this kind of um, drivers, even for the rendition variety, there is no kernel driver and there never was a 3D driver. Maybe I even, and there you see, there are so many people, 8-bit guy and uh, all the other uh, YouTubers, um, retro man cave and all the other vintage something here and there. It, people are interested in this, right? Uh, even in my, well, I myself not as much as gaming the whole day, but just like, hey, it's now take a look on, on how this is reprogrammed as it's easier to program this. and. Um, in this context, maybe even make this basic 3D stuff, like grown chained triangles and uh, texture triangles, and make this usable because we don't have Linux drivers anyway. I mean, not like you need this, but just like you could share this drivers similar to the XOR drivers always shared between BSDs and Linux and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so certainly this kind of code library, re reference code library, certainly maybe this would be a really successful project what people for vintage retro and operating system research and development and stuff really would, um, uh, would even be interested in. So yeah, um, D-Chart says barcode scanners, huge market could help with it. So it's a lot of work on logistics. Oh, that is interesting. Maybe. So we have actually, so fun fact, we have actually, this is even open source, right? From if the, We have a 2D barcode scanning library, open source and exact image for five uh, ERN, UPC, code 25, code 39, code 128, it's open source um, in exact image. We have a commercially binary only, we have improved, uh, an improved version for that. We also have um, a 2D recognition for data matrix, QR and PDF 417, because we needed this in exact scan. So fun fact of, all the amazing stuff we have here. But um, yeah, fun stuff. It's amazing that so many people um, tune in for, it's really many emergencies. It's not even too hot today. I don't even know what 
global warming. But yeah, certainly this kind of stuff only increases as hotter everything gets in the planet Earth. Can't change it, so people certainly need help. And um, the problem with retrocomputing systems is that there are only so much stuff to cover 8-bit guys, mainly because the YouTube channel was the first. Yeah, this, um, this is why of I, and so of course my production quality is not yet as high you see between all the programming, um, uh, product management, uh, reverse engineering and, and stuff. I only have so much time. My intention was always as more audience we get here and more than three dollar a day we earn here, eventually I will hire some editor, student, something, intern, whatever for editing and uh, so on just like other YouTubers do and improve as a team, build up a team and also grow this. And uh, so uh, expect the more, uh, so if you want that the quality improves here, uh, don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And this is why I focus more on how is this stuff programmed because I am very much aware that the 8-bit guy is showing the stuff, how it works, how it looks inside. And this is why I try to cover a little bit of programming basis, more a low level bare metal, how is this stuff even working programming and um, stuff like this also some stuff not necessarily shown or or stuff that i had i, I had the sj octane anyway or yeah so spark stuff so certainly other not the home computing market that the 8-bit guy shows but more the and again stuff that i anyway had the also be fun fact we probably would want to test new builds on of t2 on uh, the ultra 30 and we also yeah I saw the, it was brought to my attention that some gentle people update the SG Octane patches so I can test those also. And just a point I would like to add that last live stream Apple has a T2 chip. Did you know by the way that DOS Stewart is also working on a way to bypass the T2 chip from... I don't know what he's... So what I, I already showed on another live stream that I, I don't know what he tries to bypass but any bypassing sums up. And also I'm extremely disappointed that I made this in another video, I said this, that I thought that the, yeah, yeah, I detailed, I know your IA30, my father is not very thrilled for me to drive his vintage T3 when he thinks I will, the, the engine has 220,000 kilometers and he think I will end up on the highway with a blown engine and he thinks it's not a good idea, otherwise I would, um, but um, I will, so to come to your IA64 system, um, I could stop there without the bus in uh, later this month, in, in a month or something, but then I don't have a bus and then I uh, I need some some place. And my, maybe this would be with my wife because um, I, I drive not exactly this area, so this would be a little bit detour, but I, I drive there in a, month or, in a month or two, somewhere in between four to eight weeks. Um, and that would be with my wife, so not as much happening un unless we find a good spa for my wife and I, we would need a place to sleep without a bus. Anyway, um, it's, not forgo it's not forgotten ju just today I sit in Berlin. And uh, yeah, also support from parents, but right? you could just take a T3 van and drive through Europe, but no, it's, it will blow up. It's, uh, Anyway, uh, by the way, fun fact, I told him, hey, if the engine blows up, that's amazing, that gives the most YouTube views, but another generation, they are not in YouTube video business. Um, and um, yeah, so T2 chip, I'm actually disappointed that it always sounded like from the initial report that Linux doesn't see the SSD and can't use the storage, that I always thought this is like cryptographically hidden, that it needs to authenticate to access the storage. The Apple fans always made it sound like this. And I was really disappointed when I learned the other months, and I think we live streamed this some videos ago, that this is only, so this is not like cryptographically crypted. This is like, maybe this is the same person who uh, did this reverse engineering, that audio mixer OS with plugins. Um, that it's actually a regular NVMe. Actually, we can we can Google this. And uh, so they only I don't know if Apple intentionally or this is another peak bug. They there are some structures changed in the in this memory mapped I/O uh, communication blocks. Um, and this is the only reason. So this is T2 Apple NVMe patch. That was some patch at. Um, 
did I put Linux now? This was here some Mac Observer, maybe this, but we want work is underway. Where does this link? Uh, what? It's also not what I wanted. Work out of tree, maybe this. <sighs> Final read right to some messy issue. Driver patch. So I think we finally uh, arrived where we want to arrive. Yeah, GitHub. So I, but I showed this another in another live stream that where is it even? Hello. What the heck? It's not what I wanted. Anyway, so there is a patch that this one maybe. Ah, here, you need to click on it. So yeah, you see, I, I, sh I did uh, show this already in a dedicated live stream, if you want the basics, but basically, so you see they made it just some size, uh, some field eight instead of uh, 16 instead of eight bits. So this is uh, size multiplied by two plus one here. So uh, I don't know if they mixed like char with W char or if this is a bug or a feature. Um, I have not read the NVMe spec, if this allows for some esoteric differently sized structural nonsense like that. It looks like a bug. Maybe it's a feature. I don't know. It's hilarious. And um, yeah, for details, commentary, look on this. This is probably could have said it better. His 8-bit game is only success because... Yeah, okay. Um, also, yes, but uh, although they were... Yeah, maybe, but... Cer certainly the million, million, million subscribers contribute to this success. Maybe if you make a cool vintage game and on like Kickstarter and and post it on a lot of news sites, maybe you could get a lot of similar success without that. Um, but um, yeah, I, I also agree that there are only so many vintage videos you can make um, and not really sure. Also, lazy game reviews or LGR in the latest weeks, also not the most matching videos to my taste. Somehow last year I had the feeling, but this game's reviews were maybe better, but maybe he also run, runs out of games after seven or ten years out of games, but um, priorities and, and stuff and something, but yeah, sh sure, but I don't want, um, again, this is just, I have the stuff. I also have a couple of more stuff uh, that I wanted to make a dedicated video. Besides, we still have the Sony Vario P2, make more Linux and also reverse power. I'm really surprised that nobody, there were so many reverse engineering attempts. I wonder if the reverse engineering the power VR is so difficult or if people just always moved on with life. I'm really wondering why we don't have uh, more working a little bit. I, by the way, I know that the source code leaked at some time a little bit for something. Not that I would want to take a look on this to spoil me NDA or open source work wise, but I'm not really sure how complete this was, how usable, if this was only for Android phones or also would apply for the Intel GMA500. And it's also said that you, there you see, if you don't have a spec similar to the Nvidia finger here, right, that if you don't have a spec like NVIDIA and the product, if the Intel GMA500 Pulsebo Pulsebo, Pulsebo uh, graphic was never the most amazing supported, not even in Windows. I think even the Windows driver lacked a couple of features. And even so, I used this because I had another Intel GMA500 Pulsebo device. So I used Windows on that back in the day when I didn't have the Sony Vario P. And on Windows, there were graphic artifacts, right? At least in 16-bit mode. So even on the Windows Explorer, uh, the URL or file pass bar, it was flickering erratically and a couple of other s s places you sometimes had some graphic artifacts and I never had such graphic artifacts on any other device. So it was very obviously that this was some Intel GMA500 driver issue that was never fixed, right? I used this uh, device for a couple of years, two, three, four, five years. Uh, never was there an update that fixed that I'm not sure if you could run it with 24 or 32 bit colors, um, but maybe 16 bit was faster, which is why I was probably using it. Maybe this was only 16 bit color thing, I don't know. But in any case, not only did it like some features, like maybe OpenCL that could be supported, at least some basic 1.0 level or whatever. Anyway, long story short, Windows driver never was amazing. The Linux driver, only some boundary only bullshit. 
uh, a couple of like two different, not amazing. Um, I never run any of those, but they we are a decade later and still no driver, still no reverse engineering on all the power VR scene. And even if you would want it to spend all the time to write a graphic driver, you need to reverse engineer. You, know, you need like 10 times the time because you first need to reverse engineer this. So yeah, uh, not amazing from Nvidia, not amazing from, uh, and also imagination, right? They, their business is breaking away because Apple switched to their own GPUs and now imagination technologies is stuck. I really wonder, and there you see, they, they have not built up their embedded market. If Apple, Apple left them, um, and uh, I guess apparently mostly. So now they and all the other manufacturers have their Mali and uh, Vivante and um, and and, and uh, Video, whatever the other was, Logic or whatever. And um, yeah, so all the vendors, all the software vendors have their own graphic stuff. And um, if Imagination would have had amazing open source drivers, maybe many of the other um, graphic GPU stacks from ARM, like the Mali, I think it's from ARM, right? Um, and all the others, um, maybe many of them would not have happened if there would have been amazing Linux drivers. But uh, there you see, if you ignore the, the open source ecosystem for a decade and then your major commercial customer like Apple leaves you for uh, stealing all the technology and reinventing it in their own stuff. And there you see also patents, right? You can't tell me that Apple is not violating hundreds of open uh, power VR patents. For sure, they must have plenty of patents that so even if you work with the richest company and they buy you your um, your logic uh, flow up floor plan there for integrating in their sock um, for a decade and you make hundreds of millions or maybe a billion with, with your best customer it does not prevent you that they eventually leave you and you have nearly no business left anymore apparently allegedly something of that sort um, by the way did they not they sold it right did say, wait a second, Power VR was it? Oh no, this is not ARM. Did I say ARM? It's of course Imagination. Did I say Imagination? It's of course not ARM. Yeah, I know. I, I said ARM has Mali and yeah, that is another. So um, yeah, that is Imagination Technologies. Um, so yeah, Bypass 82, how fun. I mean, the question is bypass what? Um, for what maybe, maybe they mean this patches here for storage. Um, because as Lewis Rossman has sh uh, showed in the previous live stream of us that it's powering up the machine so you probably can't bypass it in that sense it needs to be there to power up the machine anyway and control all the voltages and suspend and sleep and reset and all the fun uh, power lines probably could have said it better we had this Apple simply want to limit people ability to fix their own equipment replace parts on their own yeah previous live stream Exactly what I said. So amazing that we have so many people to tune in. It's a little bit, um, as always, um, to end it just when we have still so many people in the audience, which is um, amazing for our small and growing channel, which, by the way, not making this up, by the way, let's uh, zoom here to, yeah, uh, just to document this here. Amazing stuff. Thank you all for watching. Um, amazing that after one hour or something, still so many people are in here 23 something people totally amazing stuff and development on our channel now i need to clean the office sort put the books on the shelves do some vintage coding and um, amazing that you tuned in and as usual if you have something to add leave it in the comments below for all the new fun stuff uh, to come suggestions comments and um, yeah, hope to see you soon for all the next videos, tinkering, commentary and stuff to come.